Folks, today I intend to focus on what it is that actually keeps the heart beating. Okay? Now, here's a statement for you to enjoy. The heart beats on its own. As long as it's electric. <laughs> ah, it's true. It's true. How much voltage is in our heart? Yeah, bro. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> You're correct. Uh, it's measured in millivolts, the so it's a very small quantity. Yeah. Of course. Oh. There are so many ugly videos of me on her Snapchat every day. That's a good question, because they do they do use a lot when they shock a heart. Exactly. I don't know. To keep it going is really not that much, but yeah, to kind of wake it up, it does take take a lot to shock it back into normal rhythm. That's a fantastic question. I really don't know. Okay. As long as it has. Oxygen and nutrients and two um, nothing messes up its electrical system. The electrical system is called the intrinsic conduction system. Okay, so as long as it has oxygen and nutrients and nothing messes up its electrical system, it's going to keep doing its thing. Okay, um, so let's deal with the first problem first. How does it get oxygen and nutrients? It's a weird question to ask because the heart's kind of in charge of delivering that to everybody else, but how does it get its own? Let me ask you this. Can the heart live off of the blood that goes through it? The answer is no. Think about on the left side of the heart, that blood is not oxygenated. Okay? So all those cells would not be able to get the oxygen they need. In addition to that, the heart muscle wall is really thick. So it would be difficult for nutrients to perfuse through those tissues. The answer to this question is through the coronary circulation this is the the blood vessels that go to and from the heart muscle directly off of the aorta there are two major branches of blood vessels that that will split off there uh, and they are uh, right and left coronary arteries. Let me find you a picture of this. The heart, folks, in the white textbook is chapter 20. Should be one pretty close to that um, on the online text if you're using that. Let's take a look here. Here it's sort of covered up. <coughs> Just a second, gang. Thank you for your patience. Here we go. So here's the aorta. And coming directly off of the aorta are these two big pipes. The left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. And they branch off and they have blood vessels that push directly into the heart muscle itself. And so that's constantly getting profused with blood. So all this, the heart muscles getting lots and lots of blood, oxygen, and nutrients so it can keep doing its thing. So 
the very first branch that comes off of the aorta goes right back into the heart to keep the heart beating. Then that blood goes all the way out to capillaries where nutrients and oxygen are exchanged. They get recollected into veins. That veins bring the blood back into the heart. Logically, what would be the most intelligent chamber to put all this blood <laughs> back into? This deoxygenated blood, what chamber should it end up in? Right atrium, very good. And that's exactly where it goes. These, these uh, cardiac veins that collect the blood dump everything right back into that right atrium to start the cycle all over again. Now the issue is, now here, here's a neat picture. This shows you, this is like all the heart muscle tissue dissolved away and basically they took uh, like latex and injected all the blood vessels with latex so like the muscles gone this shows you how much <coughs> vascular tissue it is that goes through the heart muscle itself now um, so what happens if this blood is blocked Any guesses? Heart attack. That is a heart attack. Heart attack. Otherwise known as a myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction. Okay. Um, is basically is a stop. Is a stop of blood flow. to one or more parts of the heart. May I use the Certainly. The, the thing is, gang, is that your blood vessels, um, your blood vessels are pretty narrow. Some of them are microscopic. But over time, stuff can build up on the inside of them. So let's say we have a tube that's just like that big around. But imagine that over time, layers of peanut butter start building up on the inside of this tube and the passageway gets smaller and smaller and smaller to pass through there. Now, there's not peanut butter directly in your bloodstream unless you're just like injecting it intravenously, which is a bad idea. Um, but there is cholesterol that can build up on the inside of your blood vessels and plaque which makes these openings more narrow and more narrow and more narrow and they cause blockages. You see you may hear of people saying, "Yeah, I have to have uh have to have bypass surgery because I've got 90% blockages in three of these vessels." In other words, blood's getting through but just just barely moving through. And so uh basically what they'll do in a bypass surgery and we'll see this when we go on the cadaver trip, you'll get to uh, look at hearts that actually have had bypass surgery is they will take a vein from the leg or sometimes a vein from the arm and they will bypass they'll plug into the aorta here and they'll bypass a vessel that's blocked off completely and then tie into it further down the line and then uh, and then that blood can flow through to the places that it needs to go to and however many blood vessels in the heart are blocked is how many bypasses they'll do. A bypass, double bypass, triple bypass, so on and so forth. Now, sometimes they, and a technique that is a lot less invasive and that a lot of times can cure the problem is something called a stent. And what a stent is, is a uh, basically a spring loaded apparatus that goes into this blood vessel because blood vessels are pretty stretchy goes into this narrowed blood vessel and they call, allow it to open and it'll spring out and open this blood vessel up to allow better blood flow. But again, it's not in every case that they can do that. But when they do, a lot of times they can, they don't even have to open the chest cavity. They'll just go in through one of the major arteries in, in the, or vein, or arteries in the leg and go all the way up 
or veins, in, I forget which one it is, artery or vein, and they go all the way up to the heart with a camera and, and place the stent where it needs to go. So they've really come a long way with that, this type of surgery. I remember when my grandpa was toward the end of his life and he was pretty, he was fading his like, he had no energy or whatever. They put a stent in and like that day he was a different person because he had energy and he, he felt good and he, he was back to himself again, at least for a little while. But you know, he was getting old. So a lot of the other parts were kind of shutting down too. So, um, anywho, so that's basically what the, the procedure is for either of those, is either to bypass or put a stent in. Now, the other thing that keeps it moving is the intrinsic conduction system. I want to talk about that briefly today. So, Ideally, folks, um, if I get a chance to spend some time with uh, some of the equipment that I just got, we can actually s monitor our own hearts in here with that little ECG type thing where the little beep is like doo doo, and you see the waveform. Uh, I have some equipment for that. I just haven't tested it yet. I haven't messed with it, so I need to mess with I'll that. I'll be your dummy. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, you mean the guy that goes to the hospital first? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me let me sign some waivers. Now, um, so intrinsic conduction system is basically the system of nerves and nerve bundles that keep the heart. <coughs> now, here's what they look like in order. I'm going to draw the heart like this sort of acorn looking deal. That's not an acorn. It's just this mass. All right. It's like a pear laying down. Like a pear? A, a pear potato. laying down. All right. So here at the bottom of the pear. <laughs> the top of the pear. Is it the top, though? I thought the point was at the top no, of the pear. No, the point's the top. Yeah, there's to be like awesome. a stem here. Yeah. Oh, speaking of... Like Speaking of which, there's a point at the bottom of your heart, too, sort of a nubby point. It's called the apex. But I don't want to label it here because I don't want you to get it confused. Okay, toward the top of your heart, folks, have you guys ever heard of a pacemaker? Yes. We all have one, okay? Now, we don't all have an electronic pacemaker. We all have a real pacemaker in our heart, and that's what this guy is. It's a nerve bundle called the SA node, okay? The SA node, I'm going to put that as number one. Number one, SA, it's called the sinoatrial node. It is the pacemaker of the heart. What's pace mean, folks? Uh, right. When you think of pace, you think of how you're moving. Okay. This is basically saying, moving. yeah, this is setting the, the the rate of the heart. So the pacemaker right now while you're at rest is like, all right, about 60, 65, maybe 70 will do beats per minute. And it's it keeps that steady. Now, if you started standing up and running in place there, this would get an impulse from the brain saying, hey, go ahead and pick it up a notch. And so there is nerves that tie into this that say, okay, we need to speed it up. There are also nerves that tie into this that say slow it down. But this is the one that's like going beat, beat, beat. It starts the whole chain reaction. Okay. Now, there are a number of other um, these pathways that travel, nerve pathways that travel through. This is called number two and it's not just this one but it's all of these that tie in between these two nodes there okay it's called the internodal pathway makes sense doesn't it it's like noodle <laughs> noodle nice <laughs> so it's the travel it's the pathways of nerves that travel in between the two nodes now because this node right here is in between the atrium and ventricles okay <coughs> three it's called the AV node and that's what causes the atria to contract 
basically as soon as this nerve impulse arrives here the top of the heart the atria will squeeze okay then there is this brief delay that occurs in this little section right here it's like a bundle of nerves which is why they call it the bundle okay number four is either called the AV bundle but in some of the older textbooks they call it the bundle Joy. <laughs> <laughs> bundle of this is a weird word okay? okay it looks like his but it's called his bundle of his put another S in parentheses <laughs> right right there are other words there. there should be another one there yeah yeah uh, named after the scientists that discovered it. Basically, there's a delay that occurs in here. It works kind of like um, in, an, in a regular electrical circuit where you would put a resistor in to basically slow down the, the, the signal because you don't want the atria and the ventricles to contract at the same time. You want one to contract and then the others to contract. This basically slows it down so it doesn't all happen at once. Then there's these two branches off the bundle, okay? Good news for you, they're called bundle branches. <laughs> and the bundle branches will then veer off into the heart muscle here and do these crazy... Uh, tree looking branches every which way that infuse all the way through the heart muscle and it causes the ventricles to contract and they were named after uh, I believe the scientist was a Czech scientist um, named per Perkenji and they but it, we pronounce it Perkenji number six is called the Perkenji fibers and I, I don't remember if it's Perken or Perkin hold, me on, hold on a second here Yeah, it's Purkinje fibers, I-N-J-E. And the Purkinje fibers cause what to happen? That's right. The ventricles contract. I was predicting you were going to say that. You just said it. Oh, I did? Yeah. Oh, sounds like something I'd say. <laughs> the ventricles contract. So basically, this starts the process, travels down the internodal pathway, activates the AV node, which causes the ventricles to contract. Bit of a delay here in the bundle of Hiss. That nerve signal then travels down the Purkinje fibers and then causes the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the bundle branches to the Purkinje fibers and causes the ventricles to contract. And so that's the, that's the basics here that keep the heart beating.